Guys, it's Boxing Gossip here, returning from a weekend away with my uh, young lady, Mrs. Gossip. Uh, I'll get it in before anyone uh, particularly smart comments it in the comment section below, but as you can see, yes, I am horrifically sunburnt. I don't know if you can tell from um, the, uh, I'm not, not excused to get out of guns, you know, but I don't know if you can tell from my arm how badly I am sunburnt. Uh, I'm putting the entire blame of that sunburn on Mrs. Gossip. Uh, we'd gone away to climb Snowdon, which is the largest mountain in England and Wales, and she led me up the wrong route for a good two, three hours. So uh, I ended up spending about eight hours on the mountain without any sun cream whatsoever. But here we are. I'm back, um, I'm sore, I'm red. I'm in agony, uh, but I'm talking boxing for you guys. And when I was away, a lot happened. Uh, um, we had the Dillian White, Huey Fury situation, which I'm going to talk about in a second video shortly. Uh, we had the Alexander Povetkin, Deontay Wilder situation, which by now you'll all know about. We had Lucas Brown and his ban being announced. Um, lots and lots and lots to talk about. And amongst all of that, I actually received multiple messages about Vijinder Singh who fought on a Box Nation card this week. Um, and I, I guess it's because I've covered Virginia Singh a few times on my channel before, and I've got a few of his fans who've become subscribers to the channel and, and want to hear my thoughts. But I, I was quite surprised the amount of messages I got about Virginia Singh, actually, because, you know, it, it clearly shows that Team Warren, Team Box Nation have done a decent job of building him up and making him a name fighter, because I got, I, you know, I got a lot of people interested in this fight. And at least numerically, Virginia Singh stepped up in terms of quality of opposition. Uh, I think the opponent, Andre Soldier, had a uh, certainly numerically the best record Singh has ever been in with. I believe the guy had something like 12 wins and three losses. So he had a winning record and, you know, he, he had a few more fights than Singh who went into the ring at 5-0. Five, five uh, so yeah, on paper at least, it looked like a step up. And I've watched the fight back now. Uh, Singh was in a different level to him. You know, I guess we expect that with Singh's amateur pedigree. But uh, yeah, Singh has certainly proved that at this sort of level, he is, um, you know, a class above. Now, on, you know, I, I haven't seen anything of this opponent, Andre Soldier, before. I doubt too many of uh, you guys have, and I doubt he's that well known in the uh, super middleweight circuit. I certainly haven't been following him since the amateur days. Um, but... You know, he, he certainly didn't look like a world beater. So the fight, despite the fact he, you know, had a winning record, I'm not going to go too overboard in it. But Singh was clearly a class above, which you'd probably expect given Sin, Singh's pedigree. Um, Singh put in a, a good performance, you know, working off the jab. He was the stronger man, seemed to carry the more power. Uh, you know, everything came off the jab. You know, the guy felt Singh's power early and kind of backed off him. And I think the thing I like about Singh is he picks his spots well from range. Not only does he have a good jab, but he also has timing. And he times when to throw power punches quite well. And he, he throws them with accuracy. Uh, not just accuracy in the sense of the fact that he's got a high connect percentage. Also accuracy in the sense that he's, he's landing on his opponent in the right place. And, you know, he's catching them fairly sweetly with his power punches. So, yeah, I mean, I, I was impressed by Vijinder Singh. Uh, I thought, uh, when I look at him, I think he's a patient fighter. He's a patient fighter who times his punches well. When he lands, he's got power, he's got snap, and he picks the gaps correctly. So, you know, th there's got to be good credit to him there. Uh, certainly, those attributes mean you're going to be better than the majority of fighters out there. You know, Singh looks fairly smart. Um, looking at him, I do have some concerns and some of these concerns are probably going to come across like I'm absolutely nitpicking but let's be honest this is an A grade uh, amateur this is an amateur whose uh, fans are expecting him to get to world level in the professional ranks and you know I want to I want to I want to nitpick here because at this stage he's 5-0 and going in against um, journeyman gatekeeper type opponents this is the time to nitpick because if if mistakes are coming through at this level you can pretty much guarantee they're going to come through at elite level so one of the things that concerns me about Virginia Singh is his foot speed and his footwork he's always struck me as a slightly more mobile guy who may not have the quickest feet out there and as he steps up in class as he fights opponents who are giving him angles and you know using the size of the ring giving lateral movement I think we're going to need to see more 
fluid flowing footwork from Virginder Singh is so important in boxing you know people think of boxing as knocking an opponent out with your hands and obviously that is the bread and butter of the sport but elite level boxing often is just as much with your feet as with your hands and I'm not sure I mean Virginder Singh positions himself well he times it well I'm not sure he's got the speed of foot I'm not sure he's got the lateral movement that I see in some elite fighters Certainly if we talk the super middleweight mix, if we look at the movement of a James DeGale, uh, you know, I know he's at the top of the division, but if you look at the movement of a James DeGale or an Andre Durrell, these are guys you can pivot, these are guys who can twirl you around, these are guys who can use the whole size of the ring, they can mix up the distance, explode from outside to inside, you know, uh, you know have massive ring coverage with their speed of foot. Does Virginia Singh have that? I'm not sure at this stage. Now, Really nitpicking. Two other things I want to highlight briefly. Number one, he's developed this skip. I don't know if you've noticed it. He does like a little skip or a little exaggerated step before coming into range with an opponent. Um, it's a, he's doing it, I don't know, presumably with the, the idea of appearing stylish. But you see it, he's on the outside. He does this exaggerated skip and then he comes into range. Let me say, I absolutely hate it. I hate it. Nothing against him personally. Stepping up in class, you can't be skipping like a school child before you're coming in to knock a man's lights out. It's a giveaway. It's an obvious giveaway of what you're going to do. It's inefficient. It wastes time. It slows you down. And, you know, also, it just serves no purpose. It puts you in the wrong position. You can't... I know he's doing it against a journeyman level opponent here. I know he's doing it against a guy who can't hurt him. And... For that, I'm not getting being overly critical, but what I'm saying is you don't want to get into the habit of having a giveaway tell. It's like in poker, if you know you always run your hands through your hair if you're about to bluff. You know you don't want to give your opponent uh, an indication you're about to come in when you're six foot away. You don't want to waste time. You don't want to waste energy. You don't want to do anything that's inefficient. And the skip needs to go. You know I don't want to be overboard on it, but the skips needs to go. Hopefully he doesn't do that when he steps up in class. Um, Certainly, you don't want to get into the habit of doing something like that because it could be uh, extremely uh, difficult to break if you start doing it regularly in fights. And I saw him do it a number of times in this fight, and I, I didn't like that. Uh, I didn't watch the fight with British commentary on it, so I don't know if the commentators picked up on it or if I'm the only one to have picked up on it. I certainly haven't seen any other YouTube channels, just because I've been away, I haven't seen any other YouTube channels review the performance. So I don't know if this is something that's being discussed about and is already all over the YouTube boxing scene, or if this is something I've just seen. Now, we're being really pernickety here. We've talked about the foot speed. We've talked about the, um, we've talked about the skip. The other thing I don't like, when Virginia Singh is coming to finish, when his opponent is in the ropes, what you'll notice he does is straight right, straight right, straight right, straight right. You know, what he needs to do at that point is abandon some of the amateur stuff. You know, when your opponent is up against a ropes, you know, weaving, trying to stay out of range, you know, trying to survive, uh, just trying not to get knocked out effectively. What you don't want to do is you don't want to be predictable. You don't want to be telegraphed. You don't want to be giving him a hint as to exactly what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. Um, what you want to do is put your punches together in combinations. You want to have the element of surprise. You want to have the element of variety. So I'd like to see Singo jab, hook to the body, uppercut through the middle, right to the top, you know, changing levels, changing angles, changing punches, you know, come up the middle with an uppercut, come in the side with a hook, don't forget the body, you know, I'd like to see him really mixing it up at that point, you know, when his opponent's been bludgeoned with the jab, when his opponent is trying not to get knocked out, that's when you can have a bit of fun in the pro games, that's when it's not necessarily about scoring points, that's when you're really showing something different, and for me, if Virginia Singh comes into uh, a European level fighter, a European championship level fighter, and he gets them hurt and against the ropes, and he throws four or five telegraphed hooks just straight like that, they're going to counter him all day. They're going to slip a punch and come up the middle. You know, For me, I'm nitpicking because it was a very good performance. He got rid of this guy who's had twice as many fights, who's won 12 and only lost three. He got rid of him in three rounds. Virginia Singh looked comfortable every second, every minute of every round. Yeah, it was a good performance from Virginia Singh. He did what he had to do nicely. But what I'm being pernickety here is, am I looking at Virginia Singh and am I seeing him as a prospect who's going to get to world level? At the minute, there's pros and there's cons. The pros, the timing, the patience, um, the accuracy, the power, the jab. The cons for me, lack of world, world-class foot speed, um, 
and a slight element of predictability. Is he the most versatile fighter in the world? How many strings does he have to the bow? You know, when you're finishing, you don't want to just be telegraphing yourself with one punch over and over again. You want to so you've got different tools in your armory. That's my thoughts, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, is Virginia Singh going to make it? How did you rate his performance? Were you impressed by him? If you've enjoyed this video, do hit a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel or you haven't before, do subscribe. Many thanks for watching.